It's Patrick from AI Tutor, and I have had multiple requests for this type of video. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call it 10 minute topic revision, okay? So just 10 minutes, quick video, I'll set myself a deadline, and we're just gonna basically cover as much as we can. It might not always be a topic, maybe a subtopic, but just of some kind of area of the course, whether that's GCSE or A-level maths, just to really give you a flavor of what you need to remember and where you can take this further. You're never gonna become absolutely fluent in a topic in 10 minutes, obviously, but I'll give you a good start. As always, if you wanna fully check out the topic and actually, you know, smash every type of question that can possibly come up, I will send you a link to AI Tutor in the description, and that is where I will take you through this with a fine comb. But let's kick off. I'm gonna talk about lines today. So year 12 coordinate geometry, okay? Not all of it, just the section on lines, because it's a really good start. There are loads of little results that you really need to know. So, I'm about one and a half minutes in, let's get cracking. Okay, so the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is what we have in this top left corner. So it's essentially, if we have two points, you know, we could call these points A and B, for example, what are different things that we can do to them? So the first thing is, and the first thing that you're gonna get asked about quite a lot, is just how do you get the midpoint of two points, right? So how do you get the point exactly in the middle of A and B? Well, all you need to do is you need to split it up into where is this point in terms of an X coordinate and where is this point in terms of a Y coordinate. So the X coordinate is just gonna be the average of the X coordinates of A and B. How do I get the average of something? Well, I add them up and then I divide them by however many there are. Well, there are two, aren't they? So to get the X coordinate, I would do X1, which is the X coordinate of A, X2, X coordinate of B, divided by two. And exactly the same for the Y. So x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2, that is the equation for the midpoint of two points. Simple, okay? The next thing is I could say, how am I going to get the distance between these two points? So now I don't really care about coordinates, I just care about the actual length of this line. So the distance is basically just going to be the length of this line, isn't it? We can be cheeky. We can draw a triangle, okay? If I was to draw a triangle here, using the difference between the x coordinates, the difference between the y coordinates, this is gonna be a right angle triangle. So I can therefore use Pythagoras to work out the hypotenuse of this triangle, can't I? So that is gonna be this side squared, which is x2 minus x1 squared, plus this side squared, y2 minus y1 squared, and then square root of all of that to get the distance. We're gonna see that turn up in a question in a sec. Okay, let's go here first. There's just another couple of things regarding gradients. You probably know this from GCSE, right? The gradient in general is the change in y over change in x. In other words, if I go up one in x, how much do I go in y? We've already got the change in y and x here. They're the, the red lines. So the change in y is y2 minus y1, change in x, x2 minus x1, simple as. And there's a little result that we're gonna use in a second, which is that perpendicular gradients multiply to minus one. So if I wanna get the gradient of a perpendicular line, and I know the other gradient, I just do minus one divided by that initial gradient. Cool. And then a super important thing here is that any, 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 any straight line, whether you're in differentiation or coordinate geometry or circles, you only ever need two things, okay? This is so important because as soon as you get asked for a line, and you make that connection, okay, I need these two things. Can I get one of them? Can I get another? As soon as you make that connection, you're sorted. And that is a point and a gradient. If you have those things, you can use the equation y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Now, you can use y equals mx plus c. I'm a fan of this, to be honest, because this explicitly tells you, if I have these two points, gradient m and the point x1, y1, straight away I get my equation. With this, I need to sub the gradient in, then separately on a new line, sub the point in, rearrange for C, put it back in. I'm not a fan, but I won't be offended if you use it and you find it easier, okay? So, I do not want to rub all of this out. Let's undo that. We're going, we're going. Now, how are we going to therefore do a question like this? Let's give it a read, and then we're going to see which parts of this we're going to actually need to kind of utilize. So I want the equation, so that, that's instantly drawing me to this box, right? 
without even reading, I'm thinking, okay, equation, I'm going to need two pieces of information, okay? Perpendicular bisector of AB, so two points, and we're given those points. Let's go quickly, right? Let's, let's draw two points in general. What is a perpendicular bisector? Well, a perpendicular bisector, if I was to draw a line between the two points, perpendicular means it's going to be perpendicular to this line. And bisector means it's going to bisect it. In other words, it's going to hit it right in the middle. So it's going to be a line which is perpendicular and hits it right in the middle. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so now I'm thinking, I'm always thinking, can I get either of these two things? Let's start with the point. Can I get the point here? Well, I know it goes through this point, which is what? It's the midpoint of AB, isn't it? Because it's the bisector. So... I go, ah, I know how to get midpoints here, don't I? I do the x coordinates added together, so 1 plus 7 divided by 2, and then the same with the y coordinates, 4 plus 12 divided by 2. 1 plus 7 is 8, divide that by 2, I get 4. 4 plus 12 is 16, divide that by 2, I get 8. Brilliant, I've got my point, tick. All I need now is the gradient. What else do I know about this line? Ah, I know that it is perpendicular to AB. And I also know that perpendicular gradients multiplied to minus one. So if I was to get the gradient of AB here, then I can get the gradient of the green line. So the gradient of AB, we can call this MAB, is what? Change in Y over change in X. So let's go 12 minus four, right? Change in the Y over the change in X, which is seven minus one. Now we're cooking, right? 12 minus four is eight. 7 minus 1 is 6. We can simplify that to 4 over 3. The gradient that I want, remember, I do minus 1 divided by that other gradient, don't I? So it's going to be minus 1 over 4 over 3. And it turns out, we can call this like a perpen flip thing. I got that from, from one of my students, big up James. Essentially, all you need to do, if I have a fraction, I flip it, and then I change it to a negative, right? So here, 4 over 3, I flip that, so 3 over 4. And then I change the sign. So it goes from positive to negative. Sweet. Couple of minutes left. All I do now, I've got my gradient. I've got my point straight into y minus y1, right? So y minus what is y1? It's 8 equals mx minus x1. And we are good. In some cases, you might want to simplify this. I've only got 10 minutes, so I'm going to leave it there. Let's go on to the next question. The next question that I want to talk to you about is this. The distance between points A and point C is 5. So we've been given the coordinates of A, and one of the coordinates of C is actually on an unknown, right? It's K. Find the two possible values of K. Okay, so how are we going to convert this piece of information that we have into an equation? Well, it says, look, the distance between them. So you should automatically be thinking, okay, distance between two points. I know how to work that out. So the distance between A and C is going to be given by this formula, okay? So the distance is going to equal the square root of the difference in the x coordinates squared, so 4 minus 1 squared, plus the difference in the y coordinates squared, so 0 minus k squared. And we are told that that is equal to 5. So remember, you've got these formulae, right? But it's not always a case of, oh, find the distance and it just being really easy. Sometimes you go in the other way. It might say, here's the distance, find another unknown. So you just need to be really comfortable with using these equations in any way to get any unknown. At this point, piece of cake, right? 4 minus 1 squared is going to be 3 squared, which is 9. 0 minus k all squared, that's going to be k squared. So we know that the square root of 9 plus k squared is 5. I'm going to square both sides to get 9 plus k squared equals 25. I'm going to take 9 from both sides to get k squared equals 16, and I'm going to square root to get k equals plus minus 4, and they are the two possible values of k. So obviously this was a super quick, you know, trying to get through everything at once, but I hope that gives you a really good idea as to the kind of things that you need to remember and apply for coordinate geometry, specifically the section of lines in year 12. I'll see you for the next one.